in our last video, we drilled this workpiece with a one inch diameter U drill all the way through the workpiece. And so in this video, we're going to rough and finish this board section right here. And because uh, boring roughing and finishing works just like outer diameter roughing and finishing, I'm going to do both in the same video. So let's switch over to master cam. I want to select a roughing operation. And again, since this diameter has been drilled already, we don't need to do any finish machining there due to the requirements of this part. So we want to cut from that line to that line. I'll hit the green check mark. And notice these windows look just like they did when we were doing outer profiles. All I need to do is select the boring bar that I have in my shop. So this is it right here. Notice it's a 0.75 diameter. Um, no, if you measure this boring bar, it doesn't actually measure 0.75 in diameter, but it does measure 0.375 from the tip of the tool, cutting edge of the tool to the center of the tool. So double that um, spun around a round part, you end up with a 0.75 diameter. So that's the tool we have. Tool number 12, I'll set 12, station 12, on the, where it currently sits in the machine. I'm going to set a feed rate of 0 0.008. Notice this number is a little lower than it was for roughing the OD because this tool, due to its lengthy overhang, is not as rigid as the OD, OD tool. So I'm also going to reduce the spindle speed slightly to try to minimize chatter and vibration. And I'll set a max spindle speed of 2000 RPM for safety. I'll turn the coolant on. Flood, because that's the only option I have available to me right now. Force tool change on, which will become relevant in the next operation when we go to do finishing. So let's call this rough boring. Now I go into the rough parameters. I'm going to set a depth. And again, I have to take a light cut here due to the overhang of the tool. It's kind of a weak operation. I'm going to set my stock to leave an X. I'll leave it at 10 thou, see how that turns out. And I'm going to go with 0 0.003 here. If you need an explanation as to why those numbers are different, I can share in the comment section, leave a message below. Uh, cutting method one way looks good. Co computer compensation looks good for roughing. I'm going to roll around sharp corners, let the machine do the deburring for me, and I'm going to turn on remaining stock recognition. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's see what that gives us. Hit the green check mark. Okay, no crashes. It looks like everything is working the way we had hoped, at least superficially. Let's take a quick look at the back plot and see what we have here. Everything looks pretty good. That ran without issue. The one thing I want to highlight is returning to the beginning of this. If you are programming a boring operation and at this move right here, the back of the tool comes crashing into the back surface or the uh, bottom surface of the workpiece, you'll end up with a big crash error. And so what you'll have to do in order to fix that, if you, this is the tool that you must use and this is the bore size you're trying to achieve, an easy way to control that is with your lead out parameters. So if you switch over to the lead out tab here, your exit vector, this is the angle which the tool exits the workpiece. So if you noticed, it was kind of a negative 45 degree as illustrated right here. Maybe if you're not comfortable with that, you could do something like a minus 20 degree for a more extreme, or sorry, minus 2.20 for a more extreme angle, and you can shorten the length. Pardon me, let's see what that looks like now. So you see how that movement has changed from a 0.1 segment at a 45 degree angle. Now it's only at a 20 degree angle and it's 50 thou long. So it causes the tool to retract from the workpiece after a cut at a much more extreme but short angle. And that helps minimize the risk of the tool running back here. So that's also why you want to be very careful about picking the right size of a boring bar so that your simulation is effective. So the rough boring bar looks fine the way it is. Now let's go in and finish that same profile. So I'm gonna go with the finishing operation. I'm gonna select the exact same chain. And it all happens that I only have one boring bar in my machine. So I'm gonna use the exact same one for roughing and finishing. I'm going to adjust the feed rate to reflect a desire for a better surface finish. So I'll go with 4,000 per rev. I'm going to just very slightly increase the spindle speed, but not very high because I'm still trying to minimize chatter and vibration. Uh, I'm going to set a maximum spindle limit of 2000 RPM. And this one is critical to turn on force tool change. So what this will allow us to do is run the roughing operation and the tool will pause. You can check the condition of the insert. You can check your surface finish. 
Um, it's an opportunity for you to pause the machine and have a little bit of input as long as you have optional stop turned on on your controller. And I think it's a really critical thing because if you are making a part, uh, you rough all the profile out, you finish the profile, let's say you measure the finishing or the, the bore, it needs to be refinished because or recut to achieve size. If you do not turn on force tool change, you will have to rerun the entire roughing operation before you can run the finishing operation. So this is where I talk about this option saving you time, but rarely ever costing you any time. So it's a lifesaver right here. You want it on when you're using the same tool for roughing and finishing, you always want to turn on force tool change for your finishing operation. So finishing turned on, force tool change, speed and feed set, max spindle speed set, tool number, offset number, station number set according to the tool in the machine. Finish parameters, we're gonna to switch to wear compensation. We're gonna roll around sharp corners and I'm gonna leave everything else alone. Let's see what we get. Look at that, good lead out, cutting right in line, rolling around that sharp corner. Let's do a back plot, make sure everything looks the way we want it to. Perfect, no issue. And there you go, You're, you have roughing and finished boring. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. And if this video was lacking in any particular description, I can always add another video. Thanks for watching.